Hello, my fellow upcyclers. Welcome to the Upcycle Design Lab. If you're new here, my name's Cindy, and I craft using recycled and repurposed materials. If you've seen some of my other videos, you know that I enjoy using the aluminum beer and soda cans for a lot of my projects. And in today's project, we're going to be using several cans to make a tulip display. But because a lot of my aluminum can projects start with the same pieces, I want to just go over how to prepare the cans for this project. I've done a full tutorial on how I break down the cans into four parts that I use most frequently. And I've also done a tutorial on how three different ways to flatten the sheets. And for today's project, we're going to be using several flattened sheets. And if you're a little concerned about working with the aluminum, I've done a video about safety, as well as how to cut the aluminum on a Cricut cutting machine. For a lot of these shapes and for today's demonstration, I will be cutting the pieces by hand. But if you do have a Cricut cutting machine, you can cut some very intricate shapes using the aluminum and you get a much better result than if you're trying to cut those really intricate shapes by hand. So check out all of those resources if you're interested in any of those. And for today's video, we're going to just be starting working with these flattened aluminum sheets. For this project, you're going to need two flattened sheets for each tulip. So I'm going to be making about nine or ten tulips. So I've already cut several shapes, but for each tulip, you're going to need uh, two sheets. And you also need the templates, which will be linked in the description as well. So you have a tulip shape and the leaf shape. And I have these in an SVG format if you want to try cutting them on a Cricut cutting machine. And I also have a PDF version so that you can cut them by hand. When you are cutting by hand, you also want a little glue stick to hold the template in place. And obviously you need your scissors and you can just use a regular pair of scissors. Don't use your good scissors, but any crafting pair of scissors will work on the aluminum. You also need some clear E6000 glue and metal tape. And you can find this metal tape in most of your hardware stores. You can also find it online and I'll have a link in the description where you can uh, purchase it on Amazon as well. But this tape is really invaluable if you're working with aluminum cans. I use it all the time with my aluminum can projects. So it's worth the purchase. It's a little bit expensive, but it goes a long way. You also need some sort of mat to work on. And I'm just using an old mouse pad, but you could fold up a t-shirt, just anything with a little bit of give in it. And you need an embossing tool and a hole punching tool. And I'm actually using a really big embossing tool. If you don't have something like this, look around your house. You just need something that's kind of large, maybe three quarters of an inch ball shaped uh, thing that you could emboss with. So you could probably use a big cap like this on the Sharpie, or this is just an punch, a yarn punching tool that I have that I think the handle would work to emboss the piece as well. You need something to cut wire with. I'm just using a pair of jewelry pliers here and you need some florist wire. This I think is 22 gauge. You could use 20 gauge or 22 gauge wire. And you also need something for the stems of your tulips. I honestly apologize. I don't know what, what gauge this wire is or what it was from. It's just some scrap wire. It looks like it has sort of a plastic casing on it. I'm guessing it's at least 20 gauge because it's pretty heavy and then it's a little heavier with this um, plastic on it but you just want something sturdy for your stems and since I'm going to be putting my display outside I think the plastic coating will be a good addition so um, you can look around and decide what kind of wire you, you want to use hopefully you have some kind of scraps if not I would get at least 20 gauge wire to work with and I've cut my pieces in about 14 inch lengths for all of my tulips because you want a certain amount for the stem and then you need to have a certain amount that's going to go in, at least I do for mine because I'm going to put it outside. I need a little bit of length to put into the ground so that the display will stand up. If you're putting it in a vase or something, you can make your stems a little bit shorter. I like to start all of my displays with an undercoat of the copper spray paint. I don't know why I started doing this, but I just like the way that it turns out. So you can certainly paint your pieces any way you want to, but if you do a 
coat of spray paint, it will take the rest of your paint colors uh, more evenly. It's a little hard to paint on the just with acrylic paints onto the aluminum. So I'll be using the copper metallic and I also have a little bit of painter's tape here to hold my pieces in place while I spray paint them. And I decided that I want to make my tulips yellow. So I just have some yellow paints here, acrylic paints here. And I have some green acrylic paints for the leaves. And then I'm going to make the inside uh, of the tulip uh, black. So I have a little bit of black acrylic paint here as well. And for the colored paints, I'm going to be using paper towel to do the painting process. So you need a little bit of paper towel for that. And the last thing you need is some sort of finishing coat. I like this DecoArt DuraClear var gloss varnish, and I also have it in a satin finish. I think they make a matte as well. But the reason that I really like this is because it says it's for indoor and outdoor use. And since I'm planning to put my display outside, I definitely want to put a good sealing coat on there. So I just have an old paintbrush for application of the varnish. And I believe that's everything we need for this project. To cut out my aluminum, I'm just going to take my template and I want to just put a little bit of the glue on the template. You should be able to use these templates multiple times if you don't get too much glue on them. And you just want to hold the template onto the aluminum while you're cutting. And it should pull right off if you don't put too much glue on there. So I'm just going to tack that down there. And I'll go ahead and cut out my shape carefully with my scissors. One trick to cutting the metal is that you may have to come at the cut from a couple of different angles just to get into the tight corners. So if you can't quite move your scissors to around curves, just cut what you can and then come back at it from a different direction or angle. So here's my tulip shape and now I'll just repeat that process with the leaves. And I want to cut one more piece. I don't have a template for this, but you just need a piece of aluminum that's about four inches long and three quarters to an inch tall for the center of the flower. And I'm just going to cut tiny, thin little slits in this piece about two thirds of the way down. So you should have a piece that looks something like this. This next step is gluing, taping, and embossing. So the first thing I want to do is glue my petal pieces together. And I'm just going to take a little bit of the E6000 glue and put a tiny dab in the center here. And then I'll just line up the centers and press my glue in place. And I'm actually going to switch to a different one because you do need this glue to set up for at least a couple of hours before you start working with it again and it does take a full 24 hours to completely cure. So I'm going to set this one aside and we'll just switch to this guy. What I want to do with it is I want to take this little notch in each petal and I'm just going to take a tiny piece of my metal tape and form a more curved petal shape. So you don't need a very big piece. And if you've never worked with the metal tape, it has a paper backing on it. It's not a very strong tape really, but it's a very tacky moldable tape. And so it's very easy to work with um, when you're and It's great for working on metal type of projects. So I'm just going to hold this in sort of a curved 
position. You don't even have to really get your aluminum notch covered up completely. If you wanted to, you could just tape it like this. I'm going to overlap it a little bit. So I'm just going to place the tape just past the notch here and then kind of hold the petal the way that I want it shaped and I'll just press my tape in place. And I'm going to go ahead and wrap it around the edge and just kind of tuck it in. And you'll notice it's kind of lumpy, but as I mentioned, you can definitely kind of mold it and form it so that it will take the shape of the petal. So you can see that I've got a little bit of a curve in this now, and I'm just going to repeat that step on the other four petals. When I'm working with the metal tape, I like to just peel back part of the paper so that I can still hold on to it. And then I can set the tape where I want it and still have part of it protected so that it's not going to stick where I don't want it to. So I'm just going to fold my piece again, kind of hold it in a curved shape and apply my tape. And then just make sure that I've molded the tape to my petal shape. So this is what it looks like when all of your petals are taped. You can see that there's kind of a little curved tip to all of them. So I'm going to switch to my embossing pad here and I'm going to use this big tip of my embossing tool and I just want to emboss the center of this petal. And I'm just going to do it kind of in a circular motion. I don't want a lot of lines in my petal, but you can see that it's curling up. I just want there to be a nice curve in each of the petals. So let's go ahead and see how these other tools work if we can get the same effect. It's not quite as easy, but it seems to be working. So just find something sort of large and round and smooth if you don't have a big embossing tool. Hopefully you can see the difference in those petals that have been embossed and the ones that haven't. You don't want it to curl up like this. You want it to lay nice and flat. So if that happens, just make sure that you're straightening out your embossing and you should be able to get the petals to have a nice curl to them, but to still kind of lay flat. And the last thing I want to do before this is ready for painting is I want to take my little punching tool and I'm going to just punch a hole right in the center of my petals here. So I'm ready to emboss my leaves and you do need a small embossing tool for this, which I did not show you. I apologize, I left this out of the list of things you need, but this is a very inexpensive tool. I, I got this at the Dollar Tree, so, and I use this small tip all the time. If, again, if you don't have an embossing tool, just find something with a really small round tip. And for these pieces, I'm just going to draw a line down the center of the leaf. And then I want to do one more thing before we're ready to paint. And that is I'm going to add some short stems to my leaves. So I'm going to go back to the E6000 glue. And I'm just going to cut about seven or eight inch pieces of my florist wire. 
And you want to make sure that your wire is kind of straight or it won't lay in the glue very well. So I'm just going to put a little bit of E6000 glue on the bottom inch or so of each of my leaves right in that embossed line. And then I'll just press my wire into the glue and let that cure. So we're ready for the painting step and we're going to head out into the garage and I'll show you my setup there. I've got all my pieces laid out here and I'm just using a plastic tablecloth to protect my table. And as I mentioned, I'm using some painter's tape to tape the stems of my leaves and I have a little bit on the back of the flowers and the other pieces just so that they won't move around. Sometimes the spray paint has a tendency to blow things around and move them around. So I have everything kind of secured to the table. And in addition to the metal pieces, I also have a couple of pieces of metal tape that are about eight inches long. And I'm gonna put a coat of the copper spray paint on them. And then one of them, I wanna paint the color of my flowers. And the other one, I'm going to paint the color of the inside of my flowers. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray on a coat of my Rust-Oleum copper spray paint. Once the spray paint has had a enough time to dry I'm flipping the pieces over and I just leave them taped to my mat and just turn them over so that I can put a, another coat on the opposite side and once that's dry I'm going back and I'm using my acrylic paint colors to add some color with the paper towel to each of my pieces and for the flowers as I mentioned I wanted to use a yellow color but I like to use kind of two tones in my when I'm painting and so I put an undercoat of a little bit of orange on there and I just put a little bit of paint onto the paper towel and dab it on you can see that it's very sloppy and messy there's no real rhyme or reason you don't have to be careful when you're doing it and so for the petals I used an orange color and then I put yellow over the top. For the leaves I just used a couple of different green colors and for the little insides of the flowers that look sort of like eyelashes right now I put black paint to cover over a little bit of the copper. So the last step was to add some gloss varnish to both sides of all the pieces and because the gloss varnish is kind of thin and tends to run and I didn't want my pieces sticking to the mat and pulling up extra paint. I slid some magazine pages underneath while I was brushing on the varnish. And then I pulled that out of the way to allow the pieces to dry. And that just helps the pieces not to stick to the surface since the gloss varnish has a tendency to kind of drip off and run a little bit. So these are the pieces that I need to make each flower. And I did paint my stems with the copper and green paint just like I painted the leaves. The other pieces that I need are a little bit of the yellow tape and a little bit of the black tape. And the first thing I want to do is shape the inside stem portion of my flower. So I'm going to take my stem wire and my round tip pliers and I'm just going to coil the end or bend the end down just because I don't want that raw edge to show at all. And then I'm going to take a strip of my black painted metal tape and it's about half an inch wide and I just need it to be kind of the length of my little eyelash piece here. <laughs> and I'm going to put the tape on the side that the pieces are mostly or, or curving toward and then I'm just going to wrap this around the coiled end of my stem wire. And then I just want to make sure that I've got that tape secured tightly to the stem. And if you want to, you can kind of fluff out your little feathery pieces here. 
And next I'm going to take my petal pieces and you can see that I put a little more yellow paint on the outside just because that's the part that's going to show a little bit more and I wanted it to be clearly yellow even though some of the copper does show through. And I want to go ahead and I want to just sort of fold these up right around my center here where that circle is. And you can shape these kind of really into tight bud shapes or you can have them be more open type of flowers. I'm going to make this first one kind of open. So I'm going to go ahead and cut some narrow strips of my yellow tape. You don't need very much. And then I'm going to cut that piece in half again. And I just want to remove the backing. Sometimes it's a little tricky to get it started. And then I want to put the tape all the way down where the petals begin. And I'm just going to try to bridge the gap and tape two of my petals together. And I'm going to tape these kind of loosely. And then I'll just press that tape in place. Now I'm not sure how well the tape is going to hold outside in the weather. So I am going to glue these on the outside. But this is just to kind of hold the pieces so that I can get them in the shape that I want before I actually add the glue. And I'm going to take some E6000 glue and I'm going to use a fair amount because I don't have a lot of surface here and I'm not going to be able to see how this is fitting together exactly. So I am putting quite a bit of glue just around the base of my center here. And then I'm going to slide it through the hole. And I want to press it into position, kind of hold it. And before I set it aside to dry, I'm going to go ahead and just put a little bit of E6000 glue along all of my seams on the outside here. Just to reinforce those seams because I am going to have this outside. To make more of a bud shape, the only difference is that I'm just going to bend my petals up, but I'm not going to tape them on the inside. And then I want to go ahead and add my stem. And then I have some small rubber bands here that I'm going to use just to hold my shape in the position that I want while my glue cures. If you don't have a rubber band, you could probably use some string or something like that. And then again, I'm just going to go back and put some E6000 glue about a third of the way up on all the petals and let that dry while I have my rubber band in place. And then I'll end up with more of a closed tulip shape. So this is more of a bud shape and this is more of an open tulip shape. And to finish each flower, you just need to wire on the leaves. You can add a little bit of glue to secure them if you want to. I don't feel like I really need to, so I'm just adding each leaf, kind of alternating spacing on them and wrapping the wire around the stem. And one of the things I really like about the metal and working with the aluminum is that I can put the pieces outside. I've made several different floral arrangements and I have them outside in the summer. A couple of them I've actually left out all winter and they've fared pretty well I have to say. 
But the other thing I really like about working with the aluminum is that it's so easy to style and shape. So I've embossed the centers of these and they kind of stand up and you want some of your leaves to do that, but you can also add some curves to them just to add a lot of different character to each of the flowers. So the only thing left to do is to finish the rest of my flowers and then I'll put the whole arrangement together. Thanks for spending a little time with me here today. If you enjoyed today's content, please be sure to click that like button. If you haven't already, I'd love to have you join my YouTube family by tapping the subscribe button. And don't forget to check the description box for all of the extra resources, as well as a place to sign up to receive the Upcycle Design Lab newsletter. If you'd like to check out more aluminum can floral arrangements, you can hit one of the links below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you back here soon in the lab for my next experiment.